I made my first $50,000 purchase of Bitcoin today. Everyone's saying, how come you didn't do it two weeks ago? I'm in, okay? So uh, you got to tell me, is the crypto winter over? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm just happy you're in. So major congrats, Charles. It's great to have you part of our of our community. So look, I don't even think this was a crypto winter. This level of volatility is actually very normal, particularly in a bull market. This is crypto after all. And so I actually think things are starting to heat up. The level of adoption that we're seeing right now is really incredible, whether it's El Salvador, an entire country adopting Bitcoin as legal tender, whether it's politicians like the mayor of Miami taking their salary in Bitcoin, whether it's Senator Ted Cruz investing in Bitcoin, beloved TV personalities like yourself investing in Bitcoin. You know, so things really are just starting to heat up. And to be honest, I don't really want to see any kind of parabolic explosion in price right now at all, because that's usually followed by very sharp mm -hmm. snapbacks, which isn't very healthy. I'd much prefer to see a slow climb. Even moving sideways, I'd be happy with. I just want to see some consolidation and some support. You know, on, on that notion that you just mentioned, the, the adoption and the recognition, there's a great article this morning from historian Neil Ferguson, who, by the way, is the author of two of my favorite books, The Ascent of Money and Civilization, where he says sooner or later, a respectable central bank is going to admit to owning Bitcoin, and that could open the flood games for adoption. Do you agree? This is a pretty interesting one because I think that the West, you know, like the Fed, for example, and the Bank of England aren't going to want to let go of the control that they have over monetary policy just yet. Given Bitcoin is censorship resistant, it's decentralized and was intended to be traded peer to peer. It does have the ability to disintermediate these major institutions. And so they're not going to be able to just print as much money as they want. So I don't think they're going to want to give up that level what of control. What about like the Central fight, Bank of Turkey, kind of though, thing. or something like that, though? Like... Not, not the Western ones, but, you know, those who are trying to, you know, they, they, they have a delicate balancing act, weak economies, uh, they can't really print and get any traction printing their own currency. Could you see a bank of Tur a central bank of Turkey or something like that? Absolutely. This is what I was going to get to. I think that countries who are in unfortunate dire straits will have to look to Bitcoin as the alternative. You know, we've already seen the president of El Salvador go to Turkey, speak with their president supposedly about Bitcoin. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Lebanon, for example, mm -hmm. um, start having these Bitcoin conversations because the Lebanese pound has lost 90 percent of its value since the beginning of uh, 2019. Yeah, And Lebanon, of course, used to be uh, the, one of the world's financial centers, Beirut. All right. He also writes, by the way, that DeFi looks like a bona fide financial revolution, and it reminds him of the period after the Black Death in the mid-14th century. Uh, and of course, again, he's one of the best historians on this, the adoption of money. I mean, your thoughts when you hear that? I totally agree and I absolutely love this because actually we are living through a time where censorship is rife, where we are seeing, um, you know, free a war on freedom of speech. We are seeing the establishment actually confiscate money of democratic protesters who are just trying to protest for their freedom. Inflation is booming and of course CBDCs are coming. So right now people could actually say times are pretty dark. And although it's a cliche, Bitcoin does tend to fix this because of its underlying technology, because it is censorship resistant, because it has a limited supply. And so Charles, no matter no matter how much money they print, no matter how many lockdowns they implement, and also no matter how many medicines they require us to get in order to participate in society, they can never confiscate our Bitcoin. That will always be ours. And so we often look at Bitcoin right. as this technology, which kind of really becomes symbolic of being able to remove the shackles of authoritarian and tyrannical government policy.